U.S. economy, our nation's leaders are racing to earn enough congressional support for a deal that would raise the government's borrowing limit and avoid a default that could devastate the economy. The government is expected to run out of money by June 5th. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. Fix the Fiscal Responsibility Act. A critical time on Capitol Hill as President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy line up the votes needed to pass their debt ceiling deal through Congress. Look, you know I never say I'm confident what the Congress is going to do, but I feel very good about it. If it passes, the compromise would guarantee the debt limit would be raised through 2025, averting a potentially devastating U.S. default during the upcoming 2024 presidential campaign. The House and Senate need to pass and the president needs to sign the bill into law by June 5th, the date the Treasury Department says the government will run out of cash to pay its bills. But some progressive Democrats are unhappy, saying the president made too many concessions during negotiations, especially when adding new work requirements for Americans aged 50 to 54 who rely on federal food assistance. I think it is uh, really unfortunate that the president opened the door to this. Meantime, several House Republicans in the Freedom Caucus are slamming McCarthy, arguing his deal with Biden falls short of their initial spending demands. Not one Republican should vote for this deal. It is a bad deal. Sources telling ABC News Biden and McCarthy's strategy is to press moderate lawmakers on both sides to support the bill. This is the strongest debt ceiling we ever had. The agreement rescinds billions of dollars in unused COVID relief and IRS funding, ends Biden's freeze on student loan payments in August, and preserves Social Security, Medicaid, and veterans' benefits. At stake, if the bill doesn't pass, possibly another recession, military salaries and veterans' benefits could be delayed, and 401ks could plummet. Veterans across this country are having to think about what does it mean for me to have to ration my current paycheck. Speaker McCarthy has insisted House members need 72 hours to look over this bill. Tomorrow evening, that review period ends, setting up an expected late night vote in the chamber Wednesday. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Meanwhile, we spoke with some members of Congress who represent Mid Missouri, but so far things have been somewhat silent while lawmakers review the debt deal. ABC 17's Mitchell Kaminsky reached out to congressmen, senators, and political parties on both sides to try to find out what they think of this deal. Morgan, Congressman Mark Alford and Senator Josh Hawley were the only ones that responded to our request. Alford told me that he is not able to comment about the bill until Thursday morning. Meanwhile, Senator Hawley said his team would not be available for comment until Wednesday. We plan on speaking to both of them later this week. Senator Eric Schmidt, Congressman Blaine Lukemeyer, and Congressman Sam Graves did not respond to our request. Neither did the Missouri Republican or Democratic parties. ABC 17 also reached out to Boone County District 2 Commissioner Janet Thompson to find out about the impact of the debt ceiling clawback proposals, which would return unspent COVID relief money back to the government. Thompson said the money for local governments is protected in the clawbacks, adding that, quote, that's good news for every local jurisdiction People were relying on it, end quote. We will continue to keep you updated on the air and online when we gather more information from mid-Missouri representatives. Thank you, Mitchell. During negotiations, Alford was critical of President Joe Biden after some Democrats were urging him to use the 14th Amendment while Republicans lobbied for spending cuts.